This is a bright and shiny mini mechanical keyboard with a lot of LEDs. In order to function and to connect to a computer, it needs a low level software, which is called a firmware. Mechanical keyboards have different sizes and shapes, but they all need a firmware. KMK is a free and open source firmware for mechanical keyboards, like this one. It is written in CircuitPython and the source code is available in GitHub. Let me show you some of the cool features of KMK. In order to proceed, we need a mechanical keyboard and the most important part of a mechanical keyboard nowadays is the printed circuit board. This is exactly what the sponsor of this video can help us with. PCBWay.com is famous for offering quick manufacturing of high quality prototypes of printed circuit boards. Furthermore, nowadays PCBWay also offers injection molding, sheet metal fabrication, 3D printing and CNC services. Recently, I designed a new mini mechanical keyboard with 12 keys using the free and open source software KeyCAD. I've exported the Gerber files, uploaded them at PCBWay.com and in a few days they were manufactured and delivered to Bulgaria via DHL. Pretty much all of the components are for surface mount technology assembly, including the Xiao RP2040 module that I'm using. I like soldering, so I have already manually soldered all these components to one of the prototypes. However, if you're not a huge fan of soldering, PCBWay can help you with this too, because they also offer assembly services. KMK runs on various microcontrollers and many different keyboards. The installation process is straightforward, although it varies depending on the particular hardware that you have. Step number one is to install CircuitPython. KMK requires CircuitPython 7 or higher, and actually this is quite an old version of CircuitPython nowadays. Step number two is to copy the KMK basic files from the uh, GitHub repository. Step number three is to copy the board specific files depending on your hardware. And step number four is optional because your hardware may require some additional libraries. If so, also copy them. That's all. Once you do all these steps, you have QMK up and running on your mechanical keyboard. The first and most important feature for any firmware, including KMK, is that you can assign key codes to each key. Furthermore, in the firmware you can define a combo which will trigger several keys or a combination of keys when a single key on the physical keyboard is pressed. This is probably the most useful way you can use a mini mechanical keyboard. However, for Anavi Macro Pad 12, I've assigned the digits plus A and B for each of the 12 keys. By the way, this is a hot swappable keyboard, which means you can change the switches on the fly. KMK has a module to support encoders. The rotary encoder is a digital device for a twist control on mechanical keyboards, which allows rotation on 360 degrees. The encoder is super convenient for tasks like volume control, Furthermore, certain encoders, like the one on Anavi Macro Pad 10, can be clicked. In this case, I have programmed KMK to send the mute key code each time when the encoder has been clicked. One more thing, there is a huge technical difference between the potentiometer and the rotary encoder, although they look similar. The potentiometer is analog and the rotary encoder is digital which means it sends impulses when you rotate it, therefore you can rotate it on 360 degrees. Another feature of KMK is the monocolor backlight. Here on Anavi Macro Pad 12, I have added yellow LEDs as a backlight. I decided to use SMD LEDs in order not to have any conflicts with the hot swappable sockets and switches. Of course, for different keyboards and other designs, instead you can use 3mm true hole LEDs. The KMK firmware has built in features to increase and decrease the brightness of the backlight. When we talk about LEDs, the most fascinating feature of KMK is the support of the RGB Undergrow NeoPixel LEDs. 
These are RGB LEDs that can be individually addressed, which means that each LED in the sequence can have different color, therefore you can make cool animations with them. This feature in the KMK firmware is implemented thanks to the new Pixel library from Adafruit. It is a really cool feature and I'm using it on several keyboards. The Xiao RP2040 module has a built-in NeoPixel and therefore I have animations on it as well as on the LEDs for the underglow on the back of the keyboards. As of the moment of making this video, KMK supports the following addressable LEDs thanks to the new Pixel library from Adafruit. WS2811, WS2812, WS2812B, WS2812C, as well as SK6812, SK6812 Mini and SK6805. Another interesting feature of the KMK firmware is that you can add a mini OLED display connected over the I2C protocol. Here I have a yellow blue mini OLED display. In order to interact with it, KMK uses the Adafruit CircuitPython display I.O. and text libraries. Such a mini display can be useful in various occasions. For example, if your keyboard has multiple layers, it can show you the active layer and provide you hints about each key. If you're doing development with the Python programming language and if you are into mechanical keyboards, KMK is exactly for you. This is an entirely open source firmware written in CircuitPython that runs on a variety of microcontrollers and mechanical keyboards. It's an awesome project, so definitely give it a try. I hope this video was useful. If so, please hit the like button and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Stay tuned for new videos.